Welcome back to Mark Holbert's vlog, everyone. And it's a beautiful day six here in Cancun or near Cancun. We're in the Mayan Riviera. And <clears throat> as you saw last night, we, we had some great drinks and some food and went out with the fam, enjoyed a night out. The rest of the night was basically, there was a little um, singing and, and all of that fun stuff. Of course, they had the old grab the mic and, and have some fun with that. So there was, there was some of that great stuff. And then basically just hit the sack because you know, it was a late night and uh, well, here we are. So day six, I just want to talk about something today, not just about, okay, we're going to head down to the pool, which we're go about to embark on right now. We're going to head down to the pool, grab some snacks. Um, I noticed it's always like a hustle bustle around there. What we like to do is drop our towels off. First thing, it's fairly early. Well, it's about nine o'clock AM right now. Get our pool uh, spots sorted out and then we just basically head down for breakfast finish up then head back down to the pool and we've claimed our spots um, yeah it's probably a little greasy but I think a lot of people do that we see the same sort of thing but more importantly while we're doing that I'm going to conjure up some of the conversation and I want to share with you guys what your thoughts are around this but the whole idea of um, you know this electric revolution and what this actually automotive revolution looks like right now and things are getting very very interesting and I want to let you know what some of the new cars coming up, some of the very interesting cars um, that we have in our midst and cars that are coming down the chute. Um, it's a very, very fascinating time for the automotive industry. Now, I know for a lot of those diehards, and, and I'm kind of on that cusp, because remember, I'm a Gen X, and honestly, oh, what do we have here? Look at this little bastard. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. These little guys like to hang around and grab eats all over the place but anyway um enough about him yeah so <clears throat> you know i'm from that generation where i can appreciate it. i came from a place where you know even a mere 20 25 years ago not even really this came on really fast naturally aspirated v8 engines were amazing uh you know you get you know a four-speed manual made it to an you know manual gearbox made it to a uh a naturally aspirated v8 engine made for a a very torquey and raw and, a, you know, interesting, you know, baseline experience. Now, a lot of them didn't, you know, have the outright thrust and straight line performance. You know, it wasn't about efficiency. It was more about the driving experience, whether you also like the V6 or maybe a flat six and a 911 or, or a straight six in some of the earlier BMWs. Some of those earlier cars really had more the driving experience. And it wasn't about just ultimate numbers. It really was about the driving experience. But right now i mean i don't think it's a shocker a lot of us aren't the biggest fans from a straight line acceleration perspective look at the rimac look at some of these vehicles that are just like they're ridiculous in performance they pull like there's no tomorrow but there's still that element that's missing there's there's single drive most of them so you basically just like put it in drive and press the pedal and now well, a lot of people love that because that takes you know like it simplifies everything on the other hand those that really enjoy the driving experience like you and I um, enjoy, like that's that's just missing now. That's going to feel like, yeah, you put your foot down, it's gonna feel like a thrust. It's gonna be like a, a day at the at the amusement ride park, at the park, amusement park, sorry. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, like that is exciting. And you know, I've driven, you know, the Model S Plaids, the Model X Plaids, been in those as well. And let me tell you, there's nothing short of like, it pulls the wind out of you when it's accelerating. It's, it's impressive. But it's more than that. It's what about the cars that actually deliver the go? Oh my God, what are we dealing with here? Look at these guys. Where are they all coming from? Holy shit. Look at these little guys. Go, go, go. Holy, look at them. Anyway, I don't know where they're all coming from, but uh, it's pretty wild looking here. Let's just see here. Look at this guy climbing the tree. And that little guy right there, look at him. He's just waiting. He wants something to eat. He's waiting for his little buddies to all bugger off. And he's going to come and get some of his own right there. Look at him. But anyway, what it is, is I think this is literally the revolution of the automotive industry. I think things are going to be very, very interesting. Why? Well, now some of these car manufacturers are saying, okay, not every Tom, Dick, and Harry wants to drive an electric vehicle like a Tesla, but there are obviously benefits, and some of the benefits are, oh yeah, you, you know, the I, I'm not even going to touch on that environmental thing because I think that's not 
personally, I don't think that's truly a, a, a justification. It's about as accurate as Pfizer, right? So, but we're not talking about that today. What I think it is, is where electrification can be interesting is from a performance standpoint. So where, you know, where you think the Teslas of the world have gone wrong and have not gone wrong because that's their own agenda and that's their own mandate. But think about take that electrical element and somehow incorporate that into a vehicle that's otherwise ICE that provides the screaming Banshee engine, you know, whether it's a V6, V8, you know, V10, maybe V12 and... You know, and then you throw an electrification in there to give you torque infill, to give you that boost out of the hole, to give you the better top end thrust, to give you all those other elements adds to the driving experience. But you haven't lost of the driving experience in the sense of what if it still has a dual clutch transmission? What if it still has that twin turbo howling noises? What if it makes all those great sounds and, and still pulls gears and does all those great things, but you haven't given up on those elements because the electri electrification simply just adds the whole experience. I think there's great a, a great opportunity here, and it's not as basic as the old school vehicles, but none of them are. I mean, you, those older V8s, the older V6s or straight sixes or what have you, they were naturally acid. But we've we've moved on now. Everything's moved to turbos and superchargers. We've all gotten used to that. Look at Ferrari. Everybody was just screaming bloody murder when they went to the twin turbo v8 in the 488 from the 458 some people you know literally cherish the 458 but there's no question in my mind that the 488 just literally eclipses the 458 in performance in every aspect so as as time goes on we're getting more used to you know these this additional technology that makes things faster better quicker stronger um but it still has the attributes of a ferrari and and the dual clutch gearbox and the looks and the style and all those things so they really haven't lost, but we've gotten used to that. Okay, now they went from naturally aspirated <clears throat> to to uh, turbos and superchargers. Superchargers like the F-Type we have in our cars. That just adds to the driving experience. You get a little additional supercharger wine. You get more power. What's wrong with more power? I love it. Um, so clearly this technology is adding things. You know, the fact of the matter is if some of these big manufacturers, the Ferraris, McLarens, Lamborghinis, even, hey, hell, What's Jaguar about to do? I don't know. We'll see here. But the point is getting some of those shifting gear opportunities, still incorporating ICE with electrification could really mean the beginning of a really, really great relationship. Um, but again, pure ICE, I, I just does, it misses the mark. And if, if these yo-yos are trying to pitch it on environmentalism, I think they're out to lunch. They're about as accurate as Pfizer, again, as I said in my mind. But anyway, enough about that. We're going to head on down to the pool and I'll talk a little bit more specifically on some of the cars and models that I've even considered in the last little bit. Let's go. So some of the great cars that we're talking about coming up here that are available, are, it's, it's going to be a really interesting time, obviously. Uh, one being the F-Type. We all know that sadly it's been announced pretty much by Jaguar that we're probably going to lose the F-Type in 2024. Likely that's going to be the end of the road for that car. And, you know, for those that still want to get their hands on one, we talked about it in a previous video. Uh, it's going to be, you know, I, I would say get them while they're hot. It's, I mean, there's still quite a few around there on the market. And everybody says, well, yeah, I see 10 on every, every every corner. But what I'd say is that's not likely going to be a thing as time goes on here. As, I, as electrification rolls on, you still have a couple of options if you want to get the last what's left. There might be a special edition in 2024. They're saying sort of as a last hurrah. You might be able to get what's left of, you know, the two V8s, which is the 450 version as well as a 575. Um, they both make great sounds and they're just, again, what do you say? Uh, that's a great car that's, you know, going to be interesting and sad that to see it's gone. Uh, another one, of course, that's always got me kind of tweaked is a couple actually from Aston Martin. Uh, the Vantage, love that car. Other than the fact that it's... Um, the, the worst part about the Vantage is that, I mean, we're talking about Mercedes engine now. Some would say, hey, that's great. It gives you the reliability you're looking for. The downside is um, it's not true British engineering, and that could be good and bad, but I love the Vantage. I love the styling. The rear end of that car looks absolutely impeccable, uh, as well as the DB, ooh, Super Legera. There's another great car. So Aston Martins come at a cost, but they are amazing machines, and 
I would say that those are two that are definitely worth a look. Now, you know, the other couple of things, Lamborghini, they had the STO, I said, if you wanted the pure race, lightweight, big wing, all plastic parts, and really, you know, the lightest track version of the uh, Huracan, the raciest car you can get is that STO. Now they're pretty much done. You can't factory order any more of those. It's pretty much a done deal. Um, you might be able to find the odd used one laying around and you'll probably wind up overpaying it drastically, but that may be a collectible at some level. And then of course, the Technica is another great car. I looked at it. actually, I was thinking about maybe picking one of those up. I kind of checked out all the numbers on it and thought about, hey, is that one maybe worth 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 buying? Um, and I would say the Technica, if you want a Huracan, there's no better bang for buck value performance attributes. I mean, it is the best car. There's so many upgrades from brake cooling vents to you know, uh, just even the overall, the, the style of the car has been changed drastically. It doesn't maybe look like that at first glance, but the styling along the rears and the, you know, there's so much carbon fiber available too. And it just seems like the best bang for your buck in the Huracan world. So if you need to have a Lamborghini, I would say that's probably, um, you know, that, that's, that was always a good choice. Don't know if you can get many of those around either. They're kind of on the way out. And if you haven't placed your order, you're probably gonna miss the boat. Although those were will be available soon on the used market, but I would say you're gonna you're pretty much gonna overpay for that anything on the used market. The next thing I would suggest is the um, another interesting one, of course, is the McLaren Arturo. Um, you know, as as we said already, or kind of as I mentioned, you know, electrification is going to be a thing, and McLaren's no different. They've proven what they can do with the P1, um, and they're gonna extend that onto more of a mainstream car, the Arturo, which is absolutely a beautiful car. And that takes a wide angle, 120 degree, three liter flat, well, not flat six, 120 degree V6 engine. And that combined with the electrification and the dual clutch transmission, that's gonna put out about 670 horsepower. And is gonna be just a really, really fun car to drive. Um, styling to boot, I would say the McLaren, is probably gonna have you know, the game covered in terms of the chassis dynamics. Um, they're gonna have the best, um, I don't know. You know, McLaren I think does it best. How can you say that? Ferrari and their F1, I mean, they clearly bring all that performance technology F1 with them and Ferrari does it well. McLaren, I still think McLaren's got the chassis thing figured out the best. You know, with the carbon fiber chassis, they've got their latest version of that. They also have um, variable drift control, launch control, that car is going to be amazing, the Arturo. I, I've heard early versions have had some glitches and gremlins, and that's going to be a problem for sure with McLarens as, as you move on. I think electric issues as a whole are going to be a problem for that British manufacturer. But from a manu <laughs> but basically from a pure performance standpoint, you won't beat. McLaren is going to give you just an amazing machine. And, you know, 0 to 200 is going to come in a blistering 8.3 seconds. They're talking you know, zero to 60 in about three seconds flat, just crazy. So that of course is the idea of a twin turbo V6 DCT. And again, as I say, you can really get an amazing car. It can drive, give you all those driving dynamics, but with torque infill and all that extra boost that you're getting from the electric drivetrain, just gonna be a really sensational drive. And honestly, I think this is where McLaren is introducing this car and I think what we're gonna find is this is literally gonna be the beginning of what is that whole next uh, space, if you will, for supercars. You know, we're just seeing the beginning. They have to come in somewhere. And I mean, while you can say, oh yeah, Tesla Model S Plaid has a thousand horse. Yeah, that motor will literally pull the Artura along. But what can you say? It's a single drive, you know, put your foot down and it's like, you know, just doing whatever. It's pretty basic, pretty standard. Uh, Ferrari also has a three liter of the 2.9 in the 296 GTB. Well, they're basically saying 2.9 liters, 120 degree as well, wide angle V6 twin turbocharged, also with a DCT, and it's gonna be amazing car. Now that's gonna come at a little higher price point than you're gonna get it for the Arturo, but it also has the electrification and instead of the 671 horsepower, it has a whopping 820 horsepower coming out of that Ferrari. So the 296 is definitely gonna be the king of sort of that 
lower entry level supercar lo car brand brands essentially what i'd say and it's going to destroy in my mind pretty much everything that we know today um, i think a lot of the initial numbers by ferrari are a little bit sandbagging um i, I can only see you know those guys that are really just finding a sweet spot <clears throat> able to get extract even more jam out of that 296 now the 296 is all aluminum and that's to me the only thing ferrari you know everything's aluminum aluminum and they do that in-house because they have the manufacturer capability and so they continually manufacture their cars aluminum chassis aluminum you know body panels and all so on and so forth i mean with some extra carbon fiber add-ons but the underlying chassis is not carbon fiber as opposed to the mclarens which truly are in my mind have a better chassis dynamics especially once you start dealing with convertibles and you lose that rigidity on top that's going to be you know obviously an advantage to the mclaren world and as well you can shed weight mclarens typically are going to be lighter stiffer stronger in that regard and they don't need to put down as much power to make out the same level of performance so those are a couple of great cars i think as i mentioned the huracan what we're going to see here as they're sort of running the end of the gambit here with the, uh, I don't know, with, with this current Huracan, I think it's pretty clear that we're going to be going to electrification. The real question is, what does that drivetrain look like in the newest Huracan? The Aventador is going to be promises to be over a thousand ponies. It's going to be a pretty wild world and hang on for the crazy ride in the uh, Lamborghini world because they're always in it for, you know, the intensity, the noise, the dynamics and all of that. Not necessarily the fastest around the track, but certainly one of the most enjoyable and exciting around the track and certainly the one that you'd like to show up at that crazy party with and you know rolling in the lambo so lamborghini definitely going to be a great car to look at here in the next couple of years as they further develop and enhance what is guaranteed to be a hybrid hybrid supercar then on the sad side of this affair is, is you know dodge comes up with this challenger this electric challenger that has electronic sound exhaust notes oh just i'm sorry but that's got cheese written all over it now, I mean, I, I will definitely get on board with something where they add a little bit of extra jam to give that car a little better driving dynamics, but when they just outright make it cheesy, then I think they've gone too far. Sadly, some of the other brands, of course, the, the Shelby's, the GT350, 500s, that I feel is gonna have a limited or expiration date, and there's gonna be some changes in that front as well. Corvette, it's gonna be amazing. As we already know, the C8 and the Z06 is a beast already with about six and a half hundred horse, it's gonna be definitely something worth, you know, potentially picking up. And I would expect the ZR1 going to be even far more intense. Which is your favorite? You like to say the, the McLarens, the 296, or the uh, Arturos, or do you like a 296 Ferrari, or how about the Lambos? What's your flavor? Honda Civic, no. <laughs> Honda Civic, yeah, you betcha. Lambos. Lambos? Why, what about them? What do you like about Lambo? <laughs> they look better. They're sexier cars. No, then yeah. what? Then the Ferrari. Ooh. Ouch. Anyway. What are you doing over there? I'm not sure what's happening over there. Uh-oh. Mungy mungy. Little party over there. Look at these guys. What are they up to? And this guy here is playing the guitar. What are those things, anybody? Comment section below, love to hear it.